Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode. My name is Walden Wong. I'm a comic book artist for Marvel and DC Comics. You can check out my website where you can find out more about uh, me and what I do in comics. Uh, that website is waldenwongart.com. Uh, you can find it in the links below the video description. And today I'm going to be doing an art review and critique for one of my patrons. Um, over on my Patreon, I also add links below this video description. Uh, I have mentorship for people who want to aspiring artists that wants to do penciling, inking, as well as uh, lettering or um, coloring and all that stuff. So check out my Patreon page and if you enjoy these videos, uh, you can also support me over there on Patreon. So today I'm going to be reviewing one of the artworks that I got from my Patreon. Usually what happens is uh, my Patreon will uh, ink some stuff or pencil some stuff and they'll send it to me and then when I'm uh, look at it once I'm done I will make a video like this one here and I will send it to Patreon and then everyone else will also learn from that as well. So the Patreon they'll get like a markup of my uh, um, my review and critique so they can see in like what they what they're doing. So usually if I'm critiquing someone it helps them a lot because they're inking towards what they want to do and then I'm critiquing them specifically but everyone here can also learn. So without further ado today's uh, art re and review is from a, a image from Spider-Man and Deadpool. So let's get started. <music> Spider-Man Deadpool page for Marvel Comics that was penciled by M. McGinnis. A uh, very nice page and I'm going to toggle around so you can see how the pencil looks uh, before it was inked. So this is um, one of my patrons, his name is Bruno, and this is his inks which uh, looks pretty very cool. It's uh, pretty clean, very nice. So let's take a look at the original raw pencils. Here's the pencils, uh, it was converted blue line. What you see here is a light blue. Uh, in comic book industry we call this a blue line. What happens is a uh, comic book penciler would draw everything in pencil. They'll scan it uh, in full color and then they will send the, the pencil scans to the inker. The inker would take that and convert it to blue line, which you see here. Everything in light blue is printed out on a large scale uh, printer and then the inker will go in there and they'll start inking everything in black and white. And then once they're done with inking it, they would um, scan it again and usually the scan, it will knock out all the blue lines. That's why we do comic books in blue lines. So let's take a look at the pencils here. The pencils, um, these little areas that you see here, these little X's or these little um, scribbles here, that's uh, the penciler telling the artist that uh, that's gonna be a black area. Sometimes the pencil will shade everything in and you see X's here and it's shaded in. Other times when it's just a solid black area, they'll just draw like an X. This one is just like a lot of X's that's connected. So let's take a look at the inks right over here. And then when I'm doing the markups, I'll mark it in red. So uh, my patron uh, who gets this, uh, they'll see right away uh, what needs to be uh, done uh, correctly and what needs to be uh, fixed. Okay, so right over here, let's take a look. Uh, the first panel over here looks pretty good. I do like this right here, the line weight over here, where, where this part is thicker and it goes thinner. So that's called line weight. Line weights is when the more you bounce the line weights around, the more a 2D image will look, uh, you, you'll have more depth. Okay, uh, some areas aren't complete. I would go in there and kind of finish up some of these lines over here. Like it's just, it's just empty over there. Um, I can tell this is kind of like a, it looks like digital art over here, which which is not that bad. Um, when you're doing halos, uh, which is, which is like a white line that separates the uh, two black area, I wouldn't I wouldn't draw like a black uh, like a white, and then on that line a black, and then white and a black. Instead, what I would do what I would do is uh, I would fill all this in black. I'll do it in red first, so we can see it, and then I'll go in there and just do the white around the black. So right over here, I would do this. Okay, so I want to do one in the, its correct color. So like uh, for example, if I would make all this black right over here, complete all that in black. Okay, and then up here, I would start drawing that white line in between the black. So it's almost like a separation of um, the metal part. Okay, I wouldn't do uh, right here where it's like white and then it changes to black and it changes away, but a, a separation of line over there. I look for another area that uh, it shows up um, just to give it a more um, exa better example. And some of these are a little bit too thin over here. I would go a little bit thicker. So right about here, let's see. Let's take a look at this. Okay, we zoom back. Control. There's a lot going on. Okay, going right over here. 
This part, these lines are a little bit too, too light. And again, I'm just gonna go in here and fill all this in black first. And instead of having the line exactly on the line, I would instead draw right next to that line and make that a little bit thicker. Okay, that, that will look a little bit better. I'm gonna rotate this a little bit so I can get a smoother line. I'll do a, um, a practice line, which I call a ghost line, and I'll just arc right around there. So this way, this line here is smoother going from here to here. Same with this, instead of it being on the line, I would separate it from the top and I would ink that alongside. And then here I would have this black. Now that, this looks uh, a little bit better this way. Same, same with all these, okay? And let's take a look at the other areas that uh, we can uh, learn from. Okay, I'm gonna rotate this back into the, to the right place. Now, objects in front is usually thicker than objects in back. Uh, that said, um, we have um, this character, Spider-Man. We have Deadpool back there without his mask. We have foreground, middle ground, and background. With foreground, middle ground, and background, what you want to do is make the foreground pop. So if when I'm making a foreground pop, usually I go in there and I make the lines really thick just to pop it forward. And I even when I'm uh, inking uh, traditionally with pen and paper and I'm doing it digitally, I still like uh, rotating it because my hand just is just able to find that arc of the line much better. So I'm gonna find the arc like on the head over here. This is a nice arc. I'm gonna press down here just to make the line a little bit thicker like this. And this will pop Spider-Man's uh, head a little bit further out, okay? And let's take a look at uh, the other uh, areas. Okay, her arm right here should be a little bit thicker. Now, I say that because if you look at this shoulder over here, her right shoulder, see how thick that line is over here? This line is kind of thick. This line is thinner. Foreground items are actually thicker than background items. Now that we know that the foreground is thicker, uh, we should have this line a little bit thicker right over here. Okay, now vary the line weights. Like that. Okay, I'm gonna push that line a little bit thicker just to make it pop out in the foreground. Okay, same with over here. All these um, hatch lines over here, they're, they're thicker than uh, the foreground of this, this muscle over here. So I will push that line a little bit uh, beefier right over there. Okay, let's take a look at some of the areas. Same with here. Now, right here, Spider Man's head with Deadpool's head. You, we can tell right here, Deadpool's hair, the hair over here, they're thicker than Spider-Man's head. That shouldn't be the case because Spider-Man's in the foreground, way in the front. We need to go in there and make Spider-Man's head a little bit thicker just to push it in, in the foreground. The mouth over here is pretty good. Uh, we also want to focus on where the light source is. Usually light source is coming from above. So when we're um, thinking about light source and inking, everything that's on the bottom should be thicker. So right here, I would have these lines a little bit thicker on the bottom, just to give it a little bit of a, a line weight and, and more heavy. Not, not so much on, on like um, the top part of it, but more so on the bottom part of it. Okay, we're gonna take a look at this, and then I would I would add a little bit more lines just to make it a little bit more um, like hairline over there instead of just like being empty. Sometimes when you're inking, you don't have to trace all the lines that's in the pencils. You can be uh, an artist and kind of add a few more just to uh, make things a little bit better. Now I do like how the top of this eyelid was inked. Now when I'm inking, I always make the top of the eyelid like right over here. I always make that thicker because there's a shadow that's always cast upon the top of the eyelid which uh, casts on to the eye. Okay, same with here. There's not much line weight on the top of the side. I know when, with this Spider-Man here, when we were working on this, uh, I worked with Emma Guinness on this page. When we were working on this, there is like an eye plate that they had. So with that said, I'm gonna make this thicker and then kind of like vary the line weights over here and then just give it uh, like a, some, some kind of form. Okay, silhouettes are pretty good, pretty straightforward with the silhouettes, uh, sharp points, uh, that's pretty nice. Okay, we we'll take a look at, uh, okay, we also need to uh, make sure these uh, halos are in the right place. Not only are the halos in the right place, make sure there's a little line that separates the halos. So for example, I would just finish the line over here and finish the line over there. Um, um, when I work on um, Colossus and stuff, I, I still want the holding line to be. Imagine you're a colorist and you're coloring it. What are you gonna be coloring in between that line? It looks like, um, 
the color background or your color foreground, just make sure that's okay. Okay, now when I'm making um, you know, with swords and things like this, I do want to make sure I use some kind of a measuring uh, device, like a ruler or something, uh, just to make, a, make it a little bit more clear. Okay, let's take a look at some of the, uh, the other areas of the artwork. Okay, again, none of this black and white part over there. Uh, and I would just go in there and do this, make that all black and then either choose to have that white line on the top of that line or on the bottom. Let's do it on the bottom like this. Okay? You see the difference between um, this line, this one here, and then this line here? It, it, lo it just looks much nicer. This one looks a little bit better. Okay, we're gonna take a look at some of the other areas. Okay, same thing, the sword, um, I would use a straight edge and then I would go in there and kind of just make that a little bit thicker, just to push, pull it out in the foreground, and just a little bit thicker on the, on that, okay? So the knees, so the leg over there, uh, it's like pushes it in the background. Now, when I, when I say foreground, middle ground, and background, I, I mean, don't always just look at like if it's just one character in front, one character in the middle, and one character in the background. I also look at the form of an object. Like if we look at this, this, um, this leg over here, right behind the sword. The sword is in the foreground, so we want that really thick. We have these little pockets over here, these little pouches. So those pouches should be a little bit thicker. I'm gonna go in there and make these a little bit thicker. And then after that, we have the background, which is the, the leg over here. I want to add some kind of line weight over here. So it's not just like a straight dead line. I want to have some lines thicker and some lines thinner. And then after that, the background line is okay. Like this background over here is the thinnest line. Uh, we still what okay same thing you see how this line up here is thicker than the line that's on the bottom always think about the light source light is usually coming from the top either on the left or on the right or behind behind us or in front of us uh, usually from the top that said the bottom of this should be a little bit thicker okay now let's take a look at some of the other areas okay now let's take a look at spider-man there's just a few lines that are a little bit wobbly Okay, here's, an, here's another example. Like here's a shoulder. You see how thick that neck over here is? We want that shoulder to be thicker. We will want this line to be thicker than, than the shoulder there. If you don't want to make that line thicker, I would go in there and make that, um, the shoulder back here, I mean the back of that neck a little bit thinner. Just because um, inking, we want things in the front to be more in the front, okay? And the same with here, I won't, I won't have that line going overlapping like this. Uh, so let's take a look at some of these. Uh, now we're thinking speed lines. That's that's actually not that bad of a speed line. Uh, when I'm making speed lines, I'll just go in one direction and then I'll just make sure they flow. It's like some of this area, you see how this is kind of like wobbling lower and then this one is kind of like wobbly here. Try to go in there and just ink those lines very smoothly. When I'm making these lines that's very soft, what I'll do is I'll use my elbow to draw longer lines. If I need shorter lines, I just go small strokes. Uh, I'll just hold just, like this and do small strokes. But if I need longer lines, I'll just use my elbow and I'll pivot my elbow so I can create longer, smoother lines. The other thing is when I'm inking or when I'm drawing, I don't focus on the tip of my pen. I don't look at the pen to draw the line. I usually focus on where I want to start the line and I'm thinking about where I want to end the line. I'll do a ghost line just to see if I can make that mimic movement. Once I can, then I'll put pen to paper, focus on the beginning of the line and focus on the end. And naturally your hand will be able to draw that line to where you want it to end. It's almost like driving a car. Uh, when you want to drive from destination A, to down the block. You're not actually looking at the road in front of you. You're looking further out in the distance and when you drive, it's a little bit more smooth. Okay, let's take a look at some of this. Now some of these uh, taper lines, they're kind of, there's some here that's a little bit thicker and then some that's a little bit thin. You want your taper lines to be consistent, okay? You want the same thickness and you want them to kind of uh, look like, um, like for example, the spacing between these, they're a little bit, um, off. So I'm going to take this and give you an example of how I would approach uh, doing some of those lines. So let me grab my red pencil, my brush. Okay, let's see. We're going to go right over here. Okay, so when I, when I do space lines, I want to space everything evenly and I'm flicking my brush. 
Okay, I'm flicking my, right now I'm just using um, Photoshop right here. I'm flicking it where I want everything to be spaced apart evenly. Some of these over here, they're kind of spaced. You see how this one is a little bit too thick over here, and then this one, we have one that's thinner. This one, this one's longer, this one's shorter. You want all of that to be uh, spaced evenly. So if I was gonna ink this part, like right here, I would start thin, and I would press down on it. I would space them as evenly as I can. Not only am I spacing them evenly, I want the tips to start out in the same place and I want the negative space to end in the same place. It's always okay to go back in there and kind of build up on it and just to fix it up a little bit. Now, when you take a look at this, you'll, you'll notice that I'm spacing them evenly. All these lines over here, um, let me grab a white color just to show you. It ends in the same place and it starts in the same place. We don't want one that's like further out. This one's back here, this one's further out. And all, and we don't want one to be thicker than one another, okay? We want them to be consistent. Now, now when you're inking, these gradations that you're doing, uh, these hatch lines, these um, taper lines, these cross hatch lines, what you're doing as an inker is to give a gray effect. Uh, you don't want uh, your lines to kind of take over from the artwork. You want your lines to kind of create like a, a gray tone, uh, which uh, comic books in black and white, you can't really do a gray tone unless you're drawing in pencil or something or shading in pencil. But we're thinking all these lines is to mimic gray areas. And that's it. If there's one line that's like really thick over here and then another line that's very thin, it kind of sticks out. You want them to be consistent and smooth, okay? I'm gonna grab a um, red color again over here and kind of demonstrate how I approach doing this. So here, I again, I would rotate it to where I wanted the line to be and then I would space them apart evenly like this. So space one, like this, like that. Okay, space them evenly and always, feel free to always go back in there and fix it. And then when you cross hatch, I'll rotate again. And then there's two ways of cross hatching. You can lightly draw very lightly, go from thin to thick, like what I'm doing over here, thin to thick. Or you can always go thick to thin and you just lift up your, uh, your, your nib or your brush or your, your, your drawing like tablet, uh, stylus, pen, just control the pressure. Um, inking isn't just about drawing left, right, up and down. It's also focusing on how much to press down and how much to release up, okay? Now let's take a look at some of the other areas. Um, but so far from what I see, this is pretty good, okay? Now I do see an area that um, something where what I'm doing the artwork, I, I usually I don't do like something like that. If I halo something, like for example, the ear over here, I would halo the whole object. I, I wouldn't just halo that little bit of the ear because think about what's gonna happen when the book is done and the color is gonna color. Are they gonna color that black? Are they gonna color it white? And what color are they gonna add? So in this case, what I would do is I would add that halo uh, right over here. See, I'll, I'll add the halo, I'll fill all this in. Uh, I'll fill all this in black. Let me get my brush, get black color, fill all of this in black, cover all, cover up all that, and then I will halo on the inside of the artwork. Halo is a white line that separates the uh, two black area. So I'll ink a line like this, and now I'll, I'll ink this line, and I'll follow through. Okay, this way your halo is on the inside, and then the colorist can go in there and do the coloring of the inside of the ear. Okay over there okay let's take a look at some of the other areas but so far uh, from what i see this uh this looks pretty good um from from what i see over here let's take a look at some of these other areas okay let me grab a red red pin again so right here on the front of the head uh, i'm going to grab a red again right here i'm going to go and make this a little bit more thicker just to pop it out so this halo here looks pretty good i like that it's consistent all the way around yeah, so good job over here too. I would also halo that line over there. Um, try to when, when I'm haloing, I try to keep my halo consistent all the way around. I don't want one side to be thicker or one side thinner. I want uh, all of it to be the same thickness. Um, also, um, um, not only the same thickness, but a, a, a flat dead line. So no line weights on the halo. Like keep it all consistent like this. Okay, and here when I'm doing some of these back areas, I will either choose the, either the top side or the bottom side to to be uh, like half back. So I'm just gonna have that on 
the top side. I won't do, I won't add it on both sides, only add it on one side. Okay, uh, if we got that little bit of a white separation over here, if we got the white separation over there, and especially over here. Okay, let's take a look at the rest. Okay, yeah, uh, so with hatch lines, make sure you space evenly. Uh, these are pretty good, but right about here, that one's a little bit um, too far, like, the distance between here is a little bit too thick. You want this to be consistent. So I'm going to rotate this and show you how I approach uh, working on this area. Let's take a look at the, how the pencils look. So the pencils, uh, it's a few lines that's drawn in. I will go in here and draw that um, like this. Okay, I'm going to grab red, go in here, make sure I have the right pin, and then just follow this line like this. I'll just draw it over here. I'll keep this consistent, space them really, really. And then as you go towards the back part, you're going to press down harder and you're going to start closing up the bottom part like this. Uh, again, feel free to go in there and kind of thicken up some of those other areas so it's gradual. Okay, and then um, you just go in there and then just continue inking all those away. Just, just like that. Okay, let's take a look at some of the other areas. Yeah, uh, so far, uh, the only thing, um, Marino, you we need to concentrate is to make sure the spacing of the lines are a little bit more consistent. Um, space them evenly. You don't want, again, right here, you see this cluster over here? This one is like really clustered close together. And then right here is space over the part. Just work on distancing, practice uh, distancing. Sometimes um, in the beginning of my inking career, uh, I would just uh, grab a pen, just a regular pen or pencil, regular pen or pencil, I would just go in there and practice on spacing the lines, okay? Don't just go in there and do them randomly, ha have control. So I'm, I'm drawing a line, I'll space it, draw lines, space it, draw lines, space it, draw lines. Consistency is key with creating tone, okay? Draw a line, space it, draw a line, make sure everything is evenly spaced. Um, so the diamond shapes that you see in there, you want those diamonds to somewhat look similar. You don't want one diamond to be extra long and all of a sudden this one to be wide, like right over here, wide, and all of a sudden very close and all of a sudden a big one. You want them to be gradual looking. Okay, let's take a look at some of the other areas, uh, see if there's uh, any um, improvement. Yeah, so that's, uh, this is uh, my Patreon's work. Uh, from what I see, it looks pretty good. Um, just focus on line weights. Choose where you want lines to be thicker, like underneath the neck, I would make that thicker. Underneath here, I would also make this thicker. Um, focus on spacing uh, your lines and also work on, uh, think about light source, uh, where it's coming from. So the bottom leg right here, I would make that uh, thicker as well. Um, push your line width a little bit instead of having one thick line. It would be thin here, I would make this line really thick and then thin here and then thicker here. Bounce the line weight as much as you can. The more you bounce your line weight, the better your art will look. So right here, the, the end, thicker and I'll go thin and then thicker and then thin. Just, just have it a little bit more fun. So this is uh, Marino's uh, artwork. Uh, he's one of my patrons uh, over on my Patreon page. Uh, my Patreon is patreon.com slash art. Over there, you can check out the different mentorship tiers uh, that I offer. So if you're an aspiring comic book artist that wants to do penciling, inking, lettering, coloring, or any of those, uh, feel free to uh, check out my different tiers. Uh, and for those of you who enjoy watching these videos, you can also support me there with uh, some of the other tiers. Um, check out my website. My website is waldowallart.com where I have um, work that I've done for Marvel Comics, DC Comics, and all types of other work. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please comment down below. If you have any other video ideas that you want to see, comment down those below as well. And I'll be happy to make videos. A lot of times when I make videos, I try to cater towards what the viewer wants to see. So until next time, take care, keep on drawing, and the more you practice, the better you get. Take care and have a good day. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Hit the like button, and see you next time. Bye-bye.